what a mess! And it's a real shame, too, because there are a lot of really good elements here, from the VFX to the acting to some killer lines. But hey, of course the movie's chock full of zingers. It's a Shane Black movie, but one that almost plays like a parody of a Shane Black movie. Because, you know, Shane Black is a seasoned professional, uh, who, oh, I thought he was, who's been working for a very long time in the industry, and he's supposed to know the importance of character arcs, concrete fleshed out plot lines, having an A and B storyline, etc. And he's, he's demonstrated this ability before but not so much here. In fact, even more than a parody, it's like someone put a Shane Black movie in a blender. Uh, and considering they admitted to at least entirely reshooting the third act of the film, and there are plenty of shots from the trailers that aren't in the movie, this movie got predatored in the editing room. Uh, but I wouldn't say it's necessarily or entirely the studio's fault, because some of Shane Black's lines and moments are golden here, uh, but some lines and moments are absolutely eye-rolling ridiculous. Uh, like the decontamination process to get into the government lab, Talk about your 90s cheese. Uh, so based on what's presented overall and what's missing, and not from what's on the cutting room floor, but what, you know, Shane Black should have put in the movie, I think it's clear that he's the one who dropped the ball. It's also frustrating to yet again find out that an entire movie is really just a setup for a much cooler sequel. Uh, and they reveal the, the premise for that sequel in the last scene of the movie. Like, when will Hollywood learn? Don't save the really good ideas for a sequel that might never get made. All right, so let's talk about what's good, though. There are really good elements at play here. The VFX, for instance, are spectacular. For those of you who are stumped by my by the uh, computer screens in my emoji review late last night, that's what I was referring to. And I put three computer screens because the VFX team really outdid themselves. Like when the movie opened, I was like, wow, this looks really, really convincing, this predator ship. I can't, you know, but it was presented in like this really cheesy way that you were like, this is so weird. They spent so much money on this giant cheese ball. Uh, and we saw predators, by the way, all up and down this movie, right? And they're full glory. And it never got old, at least in this film, uh, watching them not just in action or just simply walking around. I loved when the big predator walked around. Boom, 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 boom. I was like, oh, here he comes. It's so awesome. Uh, even the predator dogs were really well done. I mean, it seems like a stupid idea, uh, but I like those guys. I like those puppies. Uh, that's an idea for a sequel if they ever do get to make it. Predator puppies. Aww. Although I have to say, one of the predator dogs was awfully cute. Uh, and I have to add, some of the predator camera shots were particularly inventive and super effective. Like in the beginning, uh, I don't want to give I don't want to give away the context of the scene because it was one of the better ones. But let's just say there's some blood dripping down, and all of a sudden the predator's eyes pop open, and you're like, "That was a good one, Shane." Uh, it's I, I've never spent so much time looking directly into a predator's yellow eyes before, like deep into his eyes, as I do in this movie, and they're pretty damn hypnotic. Uh, as for the acting, really solid work here. Uh, Boyd Holbrook, whose voice does a lot of the heavy lifting for him, he has a great voice. He has some of the best lines as well. The last line in the movie was really good. So it's particularly made me angry that they, would, that they saved that for the sequel. I was like, this should be the first act. What's happened here? Um, Olivia Munn probably does her best work ever. I was really pleasantly surprised. She convincingly not only plays a scientist, but she manages to be the only girl in an all boys club and not do it in an annoying fashion. That's tough to do. Uh, Trevante Rhodes is magnetic with his few key, key interactions. He, of course, is best known for his work in Moonlight. He was really good here. He's got his, he's got his charisma turned up to an 11. Uh, and Jacob Tremblay is growing up quickly and has a, like a really, you know, actually Boyd Holbrook's character actually says, your mother's cutting your hair now. He did not have the best haircut. I was like, I think a large chunk of this kid's problems at school is this haircut. Uh, but he's not losing any of his acting ability as a lot of other child actors have in the past when they grow up. I think Jacob Tremblay is probably here to stay. Uh, he also was very cool in the last scene of the movie. I was like, I'm so upset. Uh, and then there's Sterling K. Brown. He's chewing scenery like it's Nicorette gum. Like, for instance, they have a scene where he puts on aviator sunglasses at night, mind you, to go into a spaceship, just so that there's this one shot when the spaceship door opens of him and his aviators. And it looks amazing. But he put them on at night, then he walks into the ship and takes them off immediately. I mean, it's just so transparent. 
However, Sterling K. Brown is having such a good time uh, and is so committed to this over-the-top character that I would love for him to come back. But maybe he died? I'm not sure. The problem was is that during the movie, for a lot of it, and you know, particularly towards the end, this guy in front of me, I, you know, it was a press screening, but they let in members of the public, and um, you know, I mentioned that to you before. They often do that to try and elicit a reaction from those people to influence the critics. Uh, but this one backfired big time because I think this guy was bored. Because you know, to, to, to be fair, his wife was very nice and kept trying to put her hand over the screen. I mean, I saw a lot of what was happening because the light was so freaking bright, and it was the guy literally was right in front of me, and so I was really frustrated about that, and so I got a little distracted. A couple of points in the movie uh, and I was really surprised by the way that Fox didn't have any security guards on hand to stop that almost every I think this is the only press screening I've ever been to in fact where they didn't have a security com guard come over and say what the hell are you doing right in fact at one point I was at a press screening and I had my phone on and I was about to turn it off as just before the movie was starting the lights were going down and all of a sudden there was like this little actually like predator red like dot on my phone and it was like um, it was a laser point that the guard had to, to to, that's how he indicated. I was like, whoa, you guys are like serious about this. So, I mean, I've never been on my phone during a movie. I think that's the worst thing you could do, and, you know, that and talking. Uh, but the fact that Fox didn't stop this guy, it was like, wow, you guys are checked out now that the Disney deal, Disney, you know, the Disney Fox deal is done. Like you're like walking dead, apparently. Uh, now, as for uh, Keegan Michael Key, Thomas Jane, Alfie Allen, and even Jake Busey, these are all really beloved, uh, charismatic character actors, right? And they all have their moments, but their parts are really small. Uh, and then I have to point out a uh, new actor, Augusto Aguilera, makes a very strong impression. He's a new guy, but he was really good, and he's manages, he manages to stand out amongst a seasoned crowd. Finally, as for that R rating, the movie is certainly gory, very gory, and full of swear words, right? The worst ones you can think of, but it's done in such an over-the-top, childish fashion that they really could have gone PG-13 in an effort to capture a wider audience, since they really didn't do anything of note with the extra latitude that's afforded by an R rating. So do I think you should see The Predator in theaters? Well, if you really like The Predator, like as a character, right, or you're into this type of movie, sure, why not? I think there are a couple elements that make it worth the price of admission, particularly, let's say, for a matinee. Just keep those expectations low and be prepared for a, a bored, distracted audience that very likely will talk and take out their damn cell phones. All right, so that's my review of The Predator. Leave your own thoughts about the movie down below. If you have spoiler comments, be sure to mark them accordingly. You don't want to ruin, you know, some of the surprises are like the only good thing about this movie. Uh, so put those down below. And of course, as always, you can check out some more videos right now.